Hallelujah. Amen. That's my testimony. That's not just a song. That's my testimony. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Boy, Baptists have come a long way. I remember when I was growing up, we talked about the sanctified church in my neighborhood. Thank you, Brother Green, to help us to understand we too. It's, it's, not denomina it's not a denominational category. It's a move of the spirit and a designation that we are the Lord's. And if you fall into that category, you are sanctified, Baptist or not. Amen. A lot of us have that testimony, particularly that line that said, I don't do. Maybe, maybe that doesn't fit you, but let me say, you don't think the way you used to. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend uh, Paulette, for leading us in our scripture reading as we continue to look at the story of Noah. We are in chapter 8 again, picking up at verse 15 through verse 22. I want to say to somebody in the house, somebody in this room, somebody on our social media platform, that for you, it's time to move forward. I can't, I can't, can't get into your mind or your life, but for somebody listening to me, it's time for you, and I'm not using you plural, I'm using you singular, to move forward. In our scripture passage, as we encounter Noah and his family again, we see that it is time for them to get off of the ark, a place where they had become used to. It was a place where they had lived together for some time, but now it was time for them to move forward. As with them, the same is true for us that either one of them could have chosen to stay right where they were. They could have decided that they were not going to move forward, but instead stay in that place that they had gotten used to. And that's the question that I'm asking us today. Is it time for you to move forward from where you are. What in your present or your past keeps you from moving forward? Have you experienced some setbacks in your life? Some obstacles in your life? Some challenges in your life? Are you one of those perfectionists that until it is exactly right that you cannot move forward? Are you in a place of stagnation? You're just holding where you are. Are you unwilling to move forward because you have some fear? Do you not believe enough in yourself where you can move forward? Are you allowing a few negative people to fill your mind with garbage? Are you not moving forward because you have done poor planning? You are indecisive. You are angry. You refuse to take responsibility. 
you're distracted, you're lazy. Or you expect things to be easy. Now that you run into a challenge, you cannot move forward. You don't want to work hard enough to move forward because forward moving requires some work. Maybe you are closed-minded to new ideas, new approaches, and new perspectives, and you are still living where you have been, and you're unwilling to move forward because all of those things I listed, have you stuck? Move forward, my friends. It's not an ending. It's just the point in which the story, you turn a page. Just turn the page from where you are and where you have been so that you can move forward. And there are a number of ways that you can do that. One way you can do it is to walk as God directs you to walk. Here we are in this text, and we remember now that the ark was a shelter. It was not a permanent house, home. It was a place that was protecting them for the moment and the experience of the flood. It was just a shelter. And Noah had waited patiently for God to reveal himself and to speak to him because the record does not disclose that he had spoken to him uh, while he was on the, the ark. He's waiting for God to give him next steps, for God to give him next steps in which God will make his will known. That's what some of us need to do right now, we need to wait patiently for God to give us direction. And listen to the text. Noah was ordered by God to enter and to move forward. He ordered Noah. He did not invite Noah. He told Noah it was time for him to go forward, to move, to walk out of the ark, and to move forward to the next phase. It was the unknown in some ways. Maybe that's part of what keeps us from moving into our future and the forwardness because we are going into something that we don't know what will be. Here he is, he said to Noah, it's time for y'all to leave and take those animals with you. They had the assignment, the assignment after the flood to repopulate the earth. Everybody was dead. Everything was dead except those who had traveled in the ark and their assignment was to repopulate the earth. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it appears when I look at this text that they started doing some things on the ark. Because when you read the text closely, as they were going out, it says they went out by families, plural. They entered by couples. But they are leaving by families. And so they had already started repopulating. Listen, on the ark, the assignment was now to do the same thing y'all been doing on the earth. That's your assignment to go and to replenish and to be fruitful. Because here we are seeing that this is a new beginning. Turn the page. So it is a new page. It's a new beginning, and we must be in step with the Lord for the next thing. Those who have been in the military understand 
that when a military unit marches from one location to another, there is a unity of movement that has to take place. There is a cadence that is spoken by the leader who directs him on the next steps. And each individual is to step in rhythm to the leader's call. And if each one steps in rhythm with the leader's call, then they will end up at their destination. Hut, two, three, four. Your left, right, left, right. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Yeah. That, that's, that's what they do in a unity of movement because they're hearing the same leader give the same order. Whether it is a church, a marriage, or a relationship where you have two or more people, if there are not though, if there are those who are not hearing the same leader, they will be out of step. That's the problem with y'all listening too much to other preachers on TV. <laughs> They're not your pastor. They may be your preacher. But they don't have the responsibility to care for your soul. Come on. And you have to be careful because you might be hearing a hut, two, three, four that's taking you in a different direction than the Lord has spoken to the leader. And as the Apostle Paul said to the church at Galatia, in chapter 5, verse 25, he says, Since we live... By the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. See, you and I who are Christians are called to be in perfect step with the Spirit of God. Walking in rhythm in life that is provided to us by the Spirit. And each of us is to hear the marching orders the same way. Otherwise, you get people that bump into each other. That's, that's why some of us are out of our lanes. It happens in relationships. It happens on the job. It happens at the church. I didn't say church, I said church. <laughs> people get out of their lane and in our lives and so it is this clear cadence that we are to hear from God's word and one way we know we are in cadence is we are reading and studying God's word That's right. That's right. that we are praying and asking God to the same spirit in unity of movement and asking God to show us the way we should go and listen worshiping together helps us to develop. Listen to this. Discipleship cannot be done long distance. You can't make disciples just by Zoom. You can't make disciples just by live streaming. We need interactive relationships with each other and with God in order to really grow. Don't, don't tell me that you are uh, uh, complying with 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 4 through 8, that speaks of how we should love one another when you don't get yourself around the one you had an issue with that tests your love. Don't keep a record. It's what? That says, you don't know if you have kept a record until you look at the one who made you have a record. It's easy to deal with something at arm length, but when you got to smell their breath, hold their hand, see them in your sight, that's a different kind of thing. You can ignore somebody you don't see. And so this idea of walking where God wants us to, he wants us to walk together in rhythm 
so that we can then feel this common identity and this common bond that we share with one another. One of the things that I'm dealing with now as are other pastors is we don't even know where or who all our members are. I get that question, I don't know. I don't see them all. Some are watching me right now. Except for those who die and those who give, they're not all give. I don't know where they are. Because I don't see them. <laughs> Let me stop there because somebody who's giving may stop giving. So. So we must walk as God directs. We must also worship God as God deserves. Those are carefully chosen words. I tend to use my words carefully when I'm writing these. Worship God as God deserves. Here they are. Still on the mountains of Ararat, the record says, Noah and his family and the animals. And the first thing that Noah did after he was delivered from the ark and brought out of the ark was to worship God. The first thing he did, building an altar, which literally means a high place, probably on a high, a high ground. They're still on the mountain. He gets out, he builds an ark for burnt sacrificial offerings. And he abuses what God told him. He says, get clean animals and let those be the offerings that you bring. Notice it says he built the altar to the Lord. Not to anybody else, but to the Lord. And the reason was to thank God for bringing him out and passing him through the flood. He was thankful because of protection, thankful because of deliverance for not only himself, but his family as well. And he was praying for God's continuing mercy, favor, and blessing in what was going to go, what was to come. That's why when we are directed by God into the unknown, we must pray that God will protect us and deliver us for whatever it is that's coming our way. The altar was literally a place for putting slain animals on the top of it. And here was the first altar mentioned in history. The altar that Noah built. And so his first thought was Godward. Some of us would get out of a tight situation and we go some other direction. He builds the altar to the Lord and he brings his offerings not just because of God's need, but because he, the offerer, was expressing his need and appreciation for God. God owns everything, Psalm 24, 1 tells us, the earth and everything that's in it. He doesn't need our offering. Our offering, our giving is about us speaking to him that we recognize we need him. And here he was saying that after he gets off of the ark that he was completely devoted to God. And listen, refusing to give an offering to God says that you do not believe that God is necessary to your success or your survival. Listen to this. You cannot worship God without bringing an offering to God. Amen. 
You cannot leave this experience of worshiping in this room or on the social media platform without offering something to God today. I'm not talking about money. I welcome that, but I'm not just talking about money. I'm saying there is something that you must offer God. That's the crucial question when you come to worship. What did I offer God today? And Noah offered his best, his first, not what Malachi refers to as worthless gifts. Those who give worthless gifts, Malachi says, despise the name of the Lord. Those who give worthless gifts don't have the right heart. Those who give worthless gifts are not grateful. And you and I know that God deserves our praise and our worship for who he is and for what he does. In fact, we should be worshipers that use whatever we touch to define who we are as worshipers. Whatever we touch ought to be an expression of our reverence for God and our adoration for God because we recognize whether it's the job, whether it's the home, whether it's the neighborhood, wherever it is, that we need him. I've read that we are what we click on social media. And what we click affects our mental health. You may not know this, but um, in 2018, the UK, the United Kingdom, created a new position called the Minister of Loneliness. Because there were nine million Brits who were experiencing loneliness. It was a national crisis in the UK. And they had to appoint a cabinet level position called the Minister of Loneliness. Now I read something the other day that many people turn to social media looking for a, a sense of connection and even comfort because they are lonely. The data shows that it, social media, may paradoxically leave them feeling more alone, more anxious, and more depressed. While you're trying to connect, it is creating this other mental health issue. And so Brian Primack, in his book, You Are What You Click, does not argue that you ought to leave social media alone. He says that you and I must be selective and positive and creative in how we use social media. I was talking to somebody the other day about social media. They were asking about, have you, have you uh, got my email? Don't know. <clears throat> I have two email addresses, and I literally have thousands of emails in my inbox. I don't have time to go through all of my emails all day long. One email takes me down another road because they're asking something that's not just a yes or no. And I, 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 I'll glance at Facebook, I glance at Instagram, I glance at LinkedIn, but I can't marry that. And the record is showing, I'm talking to somebody in here, it affects your mental health. But clicking on things on your worship altar that express your 
worship and love and appreciation for God will strengthen your spiritual health. Listen, I'm going to surprise somebody. Let's move money aside. Offer your praise yeah. up to God. Yeah. Offer your pain up to God. Offer your grief up to God. Offer your hurt up to God. Oh, maybe that's what you've been doing incorrect. You've been holding on to your pain and your grief and your hurt and your problems rather than offering them up to God on your altar. And say, no matter how gloomy this looks, no matter how bad it looks, I'm going to still find a way, even in this, to worship God. Is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? You have longed for sweet peace and for faith to increase. You have earnestly, fervently prayed for all of this. Oh, to be perfectly blessed. But until all is on the altar is laid. What are you clicking on your altar? Wait. Let God direct how you walk. And worship God, not with worthless gifts, but with gifts that he deserves. And then you ought to wish that God delights in what you offer. Maybe that's what you ought to ask. Whatever you have decided today, hopefully you have decided, to offer God something in worship. What is it? And is God delighting in what you're offering? Is it worthless or weak? Is it strong or worthy of this God that you know? The smoke and the scent from Noah's sacrificial, listen, sacrificial offering rose toward heaven. So much so that the record here says in 20 and 21 that God was moved to make a dramatic, gracious announcement, albeit to himself, that he binds himself in the future because of this aroma of his sacrifice. The Lord says, here it is. In the verse, word by word, the Lord smelled the soothing, brackets, satisfying aroma. And the Lord said to himself, I will never again curse the ground on account of humankind, for the intent of man's heart is evil from his youth. I'm trying to tell these parents something. That's some evilness in your child. (laughs) And God says, and I will never again destroy every living thing as I have done. Just because the aroma of the sacrificial offering went up God's nostril. Uh Noah's worship. And his offering delighted God. That's what it means. Delighted God. So when you leave today, and notice now, this doesn't say it was a Sunday only. You can worship God every day. So the question for us is, how does your offering smell to God? When God smells what you offer up to him, will he be delighted in what it is? We we should all wish that whatever we offer up to God 
tells God that we are thankful. Whatever it is that you choose to offer up to God, it ought to be our expression. And as a matter of fact, it ought to be a smoke signal of thankfulness that's offered up to God. And when the smoke signal goes up, God ought to say, I saw your smoke signal. I smelled your smoke's aroma. And it satisfied me. And I smiled. I saw your smoke signal, what you were sending up to me. Out of all the things that I could be doing, I saw your signal. And so it got my attention. And when I sniffed it, it soothed me. It satisfied me. Remember now, he had already punished the whole world, and so he needed some soothing. He smells it. And he smiles. What makes God smile? What, what, what makes God smile? Remember when Jesus was baptized? A voice from heaven said, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Remember now when that was said. Jesus was just 30 years old. He hadn't performed a miracle. He hadn't preached a sermon. He had not taught a Sunday school class. Most of his life up to that point had been spent in a carpenter's shop. But yet, when he got baptized... His father was not just pleased, but well pleased. Apparently, my friends, ministry alone does not, is not the determining factor of whether or not we please God. Don't fool yourself that by doing all the stuff that you do, that that alone pleases God. God smiles. Here's your answer. God smiles when his children cheerfully do what he says and appreciates what he gives. Because you can work in the church and be unappreciative. You can work in the church and believe the pastor and church folk ought to just be happy you decided to come and do. I'm moving toward my end. So, my grandchildren were here for a month or so. Um, And so when they were here, I promised them that I was going to buy them some gifts. So, of course, every day until then, (laughs) granddaddy, when you going to get our gifts? And so I said, well, get with your grandmother. Uh, get at the computer on Amazon or wherever you order and order what you want. Um, What I had not anticipated I guess I could say I did not give a dollar limit but Laverne knew what to do because she manages the money. Uh, Thank God for that by the way. Um, But what I had not anticipated was how much pleasure I would have in their delight receiving the toys that we bought them and me watching them playing, unwrapping, and playing with the toys. Thought about that. This is a lesson about embracing and enjoying all of the gifts that God gives us. The father of lights, James refers to him as, instead of spending so much time complaining, Uh instead of 
focusing so much about what's going wrong. Maybe I need to be like my grandchildren and just be thankful and happy that I've got some gifts. Listen to this. And the gifts have arrived. And if they can enjoy a toy with such abandon, how much more should I enjoy the gifts that cascade down from God? That's why the song I learned as a little boy, count your blessings, name them one by one, makes sense now. It was just a song I learned, but now it makes sense because I delight in what God has given to me. My prayer is that what I offer back to him, he will smile on me. And so, but most of all, I want my life to give God pleasure. So I ask you again, is it time for you to move forward? Are you here today saying, I'm not going back? That's what here Israel, hold and ask. I'm, I'm moving forward, de declaring to God, my being stuck is over. I'm walking as God directs. I'm worshiping as God deserves. All things made new. But you got to surrender your life to Christ. And it is in his power that we move forward. So now, it's not just time to move forward, but it's time to press on yes. the upward way. Yes. <laughs> New heights I'm gaining. Yeah. Every, they may be little steps I'm taking, but, but if I take a little step, that's encouraging me. It may not be as big as somebody else, but new heights I'm gaining every day. And I'm praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lift me up and let me stand by faith on Canaan's table land, a higher plane. I don't know about you. I know y'all talked about me the other week about me. Kicking up. When I got home, the verse said, was that the same leg just the other side? <laughs> so, so. Sister McCormick said to me, I saw you kick your leg up this morning. She said, I saw you kick your leg up. That means you're almost ready for the 70 group. <laughs> I'm planting my feet. However challenging and difficult it might be. On higher ground. Is it time for you to move forward? Somebody's here today, you need to respond to God speaking to you. You don't have to tell me. You can say it right now in your spirit. You don't even have to speak words. In your spirit, speak to God as you offer up whatever it is and tell God, I'm moving forward. And so I'm offering up all of this, whatever the this is, that has held me back. And you could ask God to help the other thing or the other person to move forward also. Confess with your mouth, the Bible says. Believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. Yeah, yeah. You shall be saved and empowered to move forward. You don't have to do it on your own. Just turn it over to the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit give you the unction, the power to take the next step. If you're here today, we receive you in the name of Jesus. I welcome you. I'd love to be your pastor. 
If you're here in the sanctuary, you want to join our congregation, all you have to do is stand up, nothing said. There'll be a, a, a counselor in our fellowship hall that will share with you more, hear what your reasons for standing are. If you're there on social media platform, fill out the form there and let us know and someone will be in contact with you. If you want us to pray for you, fill out that form as well. We have some in the sanctuary, but we also have a place there on the social media uh, platforms and website. You can send a notice to info at davidchapel.org and we'll receive it. And those who share with me in the prayer ministry will pray over it. If you want it confidential, make that known. It will be kept that way. If you're here today, God may be speaking to you not only about a relationship with him through Jesus Christ, but maybe about being a part of our fellowship. Either of those, we welcome you now. Come on, brothers. Are you here today? Let me pray with you. Oh, merciful God, our Father, we are so grateful that we have the ability and the opportunity to reach out to you beyond ourselves, beyond anything that we might be dealing with in our lives. We come to you, dear God, from a place of humility and gratitude. I pray, oh God, now for all of those who are within the sound of my voice that you will meet all of their needs, whether or not they ask for it. I pray, oh God, that you will forgive us of our sins, whatever we have done that has been in conflict with your will, your way, and your word, forgive us for that. I pray, oh God, that you will speak to us in only ways that you can, and that we will hear from you. Give us wisdom and a hearing heart so that whatever it is that we need to, to be thinking about or doing, that you will let us know. I pray, oh God, that you will order our steps. I pray, oh God, that what we offer up to you will be pleasing in your sight, a pleasant aroma. We pray, oh God, that what we will offer up to you will bring a smile on your face. So I pray, oh God, now that you will show up, as some say, and show out when you do. Let us know that what is being done, what has been done, is from you. So that we will be grateful and aware that we don't have to carry all of these burdens alone. Somebody in here today uh, has already or will be offering up to you something in their lives. I pray that you will receive that. Oh God, I pray for all of those who expect me to pray for them. Whether they have asked or not, you know what they need. You know what they expect. I don't answer prayers any way you do. And so I lift them up in your hearing and in your knowing because you're an all-knowing God. You're an all-powerful God. You're an all-seeing God. So be just who you are. 
we thank you that we can reach out beyond ourselves and and, and we come to you not only with our petitions of need, but we come with our praise. We pray that you hear that also, dear God, that there was a mixture going on in our lives. On the one hand, we are praising you, grateful and worshiping you. But on the other hand, life has dealt some blows and somebody in this place and who's hearing me needs to know that you understand that you are with them, that you are walking with them. Let them hear you in the midst of whatever it is. Let them not feel alone. Let them find a place and a shelter in you. Let them find a strong tower. Let them see the hedge of protection that you are putting around them. Lift them up out of that valley. Carry them to the mountaintop. When they get on the mountaintop, let them say thank you to you. Thank you to you. Let everything that had breath praise the Lord. We're up in here today saying praise the Lord. We're up in here today saying thank you. We're up in here today saying hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. I think we're ready to get out of here. I don't have anything else I need to share. I don't think. Am I forgetting anything? Anybody? All right. Let's leave this place with an attitude of worship and prayer. Thanksgiving. Thank you all for being here today. There was a time when I was preaching just to the pews and to the praise team and to the praise band. So thank you all for being here. So, amen. Thank you for being on the social media platform. I don't take, take that for granted. Uh, God bless you. I pray that God will comfort all of you in the coming days and that you will look beyond the hills from which cometh your help. That's yeah. yeah. here. Yeah, Sister Shank's funeral uh, is next Saturday at 11. Am I remember that, 11 o'clock? 11 o'clock. Um, what did I say? Huh? I said, what? Well, what do I need to say? This Saturday. This Saturday. Okay. This Saturday. Sister McCormick, I'm a few weeks away from 70. Okay. All right. Let's have the final blessing, the benediction. In the words of Peter, we hear him say, let us grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory now and forevermore. Amen. Have a good one. Be blessed.